What's, What's up, up YouTube? YouTube? Welcome back to our channel. It's the Choose Here from Choose to Explore, where we teach you guys how to see the world and save a dollar. So for a long time, the relationship between Cuba and America has been a difficult one. Since 2015, Americans have been able to travel to Cuba. However, there have been more restrictions since 2019. So a common misconception is that Americans can't go to Cuba or that it's a lot more difficult to travel to Cuba than it really is. We actually just came back from Cuba, so we definitely know that it's possible. <laughs> However, there are quite a few important steps that you'll need to take as American citizens traveling to Cuba, and we'll let you know everything right here in this video, so stay tuned. So let's get right into it. So first off, if you have your mind made up that you want to go to Cuba, you first need to book your flight. So you have three main airline options as of January 2023, and that would be JetBlue, Southwest, or American Airlines. And that's if you're flying from the United States. Yes. So I know this video is about the entry requirements and what you need to get into the country as an American, but I'll give you guys some tips for some things you can do to also make your trip more affordable on your way to Cuba. So what I realized is the main areas where people fly from the US to Cuba, it's going to be from Florida. So that is Fort Lauderdale or Miami, just based on the research that I did. So JetBlue and Southwest primarily are flying out of Fort Lauderdale and American Airlines is flying out of Miami. And what I realized, it was actually less expensive to fly New York to Florida round trip and then Florida to Cuba round trip rather than booking New York to Havana. Even though they had the same layover in Florida. And we also got a trip to hang out in Miami as well. So if you wanna hang out in Little Havana before you go to actual Havana, that's a way to get two trips for the price of one. So also to keep in mind is the type of fare that you book with each of these airlines. So one way that I found to save a lot of money is Southwest has no change fees, American Airlines has no change fees for their main cabin, and JetBlue in blue, not blue basic, waives those change fees as well. So we booked our ticket with the main cabin about a month before we were scheduled to leave. And what that means is every single day, I was on American Airlines website checking to see if there was a fare drop. So when I saw the fare drop, I changed my fare to the lower price and I got the credit for the difference. So originally my fare was $320 and I ended up paying underneath $190. Savings of over $130 right there. Before we get into the next tip, if you're enjoying this video or getting anything out of it, please hit the like button and subscribe. But let's run it back a little bit. In order to book your ticket, you have to first decide why you're going to Cuba. So as Americans, you have 12 categories of permitted travel to Cuba. So you need to pick one of those 12 for your visa. And you literally can't book your ticket without first picking one of these 12. Before you were able to travel for the people to people reason, which kind of means tourism, but now you can't really pick that reason as one of the 12 permitted reasons. It's just not an option. So the one that we decided fit us best was for the support of the Cuban people. Now guys, remember, for the support of the Cuban people. Never tourism. For the support of the Cuban people. One more time. <laughs> so most of the people who were flying on our flight were going as a family visit. Which is one of the 12 reasons permitted for travel. But we don't have any family members in Cuba. At first I kind of felt like we were gaming the system, like taking advantage of it, but just by going there, by eating at their restaurants, by staying at their accommodations, by taking their taxis, by talking to the local people, you absolutely are supporting the Cuban people. And the only time somebody asked us our reason for travel was while we were at customs. So we have heard that you should have an itinerary prepared for when you go to Cuba, just in case they do ask. Now they didn't ask us, but we always do have an itinerary prepared and we have itineraries and travel guides for sale on our website as well at choosewixport.com. So you booked your flight, you're excited to go to Cuba. Now the next thing you have to do is book your accommodations. But it's really important that you know that as Americans, we are not here to support the Cuban government. We are here to what? Support the Cuban people. So there's a lot of hotels and accommodations around that are government run. So as Americans, we cannot stay at those places. Where we highly recommend you staying is Casa Particulars. Not only do we recommend it, it is required. <laughs> so a Casa Particular is the house of a local Cuban. And it's great because we found ours on Airbnb and Booking.com. They usually are really, really affordable. They're nice. And 
there's different ones where you can have the accommodation to yourself or you can actually share the space with a local Cuban. Now, another thing of note is keep your passports on you because when you check into your Casa Particulares, they use your passport so that they can track where you've been. So we were in three different uh, Airbnbs or Casa Particulares and every single one of them wrote down our passport numbers um, just to show and account for where we are at a specific time. So I'm not exactly sure, but if you try to go to a hotel, they'll take your passport, they'll know you're American and you may get into some problems. So that's why I might recommend definitely, definitely stay in a Casa Particulares. And we have our Casa Particular linked in our guide that's in the description below. So now you got your accommodation, but wait, there's still a little more you need to know. As Americans, we have a lot of privilege that we can go almost anywhere around the world without a visa or a visa on arrival. Now, like I told you, the relationship between Cuba and Americans is a little bit different. So in order to enter as an American, you do need a visa. Just for purpose of this video, I'm gonna call it a tourist visa, even though it's not a tourist visa because we're here for what? The support of the Cuban people. So, you need this visa before you can even get onto the airplane. But, trust me, it's super easy to get this visa. So there's two ways that you can get this visa. It's first, either you do it by mail, or you can do it right there at the airport, like we did. So if you do have some time and you are on the anxious side, you can order it beforehand, have it shipped to you, but just factor in that it does take some time because it literally has to be shipped to you. You can actually see the website where you can do this right below and this is actually the website that American Airlines recommended to us when we called them on the phone if we wanted to have it shipped to us beforehand. Now online it does say that it's a little bit cheaper than what we paid at the gate but in reality it's not because like I said you have to pay for shipping. So getting it beforehand was actually more expensive than getting it at the gate like what we did. So I'm going to talk about specifically for American Airlines because that's what we did. So right out of the gate there was a booth called Cuba Ready. And before we could even board, there was an announcement on the air speaker above. And it said, if you do not have a visa, come beforehand and come get it. They do it in Spanish and English, so don't worry. Literally right at the gate. And you can do it with either cash or credit. It was $100, which is crazy, but it was $100. Per person. Now we'll actually put up an example of what it looks like on the screen here so you can see, but it's just a piece of paper. But you need to make sure that you keep this piece of paper with you the whole time because you'll need it when you return back to the United States in order to go through Cuba Customs. But we did have some friends who traveled with us who flew with JetBlue and flying with JetBlue, this was only $50. So factor that cost in when you're booking your ticket as well because it may be a cheaper flight, but the extra $50 might bump you more. Again, if you haven't liked this video yet, do that right now and also be sure to be subscribed. We have a lot more Cuba content coming. So you got your flight, you got your accommodations, you got your visa. Next thing you need is your health declaration form. Now this form was super easy to fill out and it took us about three, maybe five minutes. But be sure to have a screenshot of each and everything because once you land in the Cuba airport, you won't have any Wi-Fi, you won't have any service. So Nothing. be sure to screenshot all of these documents. Yes. So one common cause of confusion has been health insurance requirements in Cuba for Americans. But what I realized is the health insurance is actually built into the cost of the price of your ticket. So you do not need any additional travel insurance or health insurance in order to enter. It's already there when you purchase your ticket. As of January 2023, so always double check, but when we went, it was a part of the ticket. And they actually didn't even ask us about it because I guess they just understand already. And we also are fully vaccinated, so we did not need to do any COVID testing. But as we said, these requirements are constantly changing, so please be sure to check before you guys enter. And as of January 2023, there are no curfews in place. So when we first landed in Cuba and we were going through customs, they checked our passport and they held on to our passport a little bit, had a step to the side, and then a couple of other people were brought over to our side as well. They were all Americans. We were all Americans, yeah. so. Um, <laughs> it wasn't too thorough. They just really asked us like, what we do for a living, why we're there, and just a little bit more questionings. And then we just passed through and never really heard anything else from it well. Also, they did ask us for where our accommodations are. As we said, we stayed at multiple places, so we only put our first accommodations in Havana, and it was no problem. But um, make sure you do have that screenshot because sometimes it's not a real address. 
So just be sure that you have a screenshot of where it actually is and all the other documents beforehand for customs because as we said, you will not have phone service and the Wi-Fi is not real Wi-Fi where you're gonna be when you originally land. And that's it. You guys are through and you're into Cuba. As we said, it's a little bit more of a tedious task, but it's absolutely a place that we highly recommend you visit. So please be check in for our future videos on Cuba, what we did, things you should know, and our experience. And if you guys got anything out of this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because we're going to so many places around the world. So stay tuned with us and we'll see you on the next one.